Pierce Brandon Brosnan is an Irish producer, actor, and an enormous superstar. This fashionable, tall, handsome, blue-eyed actor is most recognized for his role of the secret agent James Bond. He has won an Empire Award for his performance as James Bond in The World Is Not Enough. He was also nominated for a Saturn Award and two Golden Globes for his several other films and TV performances. Although Pierce played the role of the iconic James Bond on screen, he is a very sensitive and caring person in real life. He has gone through several heart-wrenching lows in his life. But he has said several times that courage is what makes us who we are. These lows have given him the strength to play the tough guy who can jump from high-rise buildings and get past catastrophic bombings unscratched. Pierce was born in Drahada, County Loth on May 16, 1953. He is the only child of May and Thomas Brosman. He was named after his grandfather. He spent most of his childhood in Navan, County Meath, and considered it his hometown. Pierce mentioned in an interview that he had no recollection of his father as he had abandoned the family when he was only a baby. To secure a better life for her family, his mum moved to London when Pierce was only four years old. Pierce had to stay behind with his grandparents while his mum worked as a nurse in London. She could only come back to see him a few times a year. He admitted in an interview that his childhood was quite lonely. Finally, it was in 1964 that he was reunited with his mother in Scotland. She had married William Carmichael and they started a new life. In fact, it was Carmichael who first introduced Pierce to the James Bond films. They eventually returned to London, but Pierce felt a lot like an outsider there. He considered himself as a small town Irish boy and the fast paced metropolis life was all very new and unsettling for him. Even the people seemed to be a lot more calculative. Other kids in the school didn't even call him by his name. They simply called him Irish, making him feel like an outcast. After graduating from school, Pierce wanted to be a painter. So he got into St. Martin's School of Art, London to study commercial illustrations. It was during this phase of his life that he saw a fire eater at the Oval House and was very impressed by him to an extent that he also began learning the skill. This nurtured his interest in theatre and dramatics. He joined the Drama Centre London for three years to study acting. He said in an interview that he felt liberated by acting. It was his calling, it gave him joy. In 1975, after graduating from the Drama Centre, he entered the movie industry as an acting assistant stage manager at the York Theatre Royale. Gradually, he got to act and made his debut in Wait Until Dark. His powerful performance bagged him the role of McCabe in Tennessee Williams' The Red Devil Battery Sign, just six months after his first appearance. Although his name was misspelled as Pierce Brosman on the paycheck, his performance stirred the industry. Tennessee Williams even sent him a telegram thanking him for his blasting performance. Pierce has still kept the telegram as a memorabilia for sentimental reasons. From here on, he started getting more movie and TV roles. Some of his top performances at this time were The Long Good Friday, The Mirror Cracked, The Professionals, Murphy's Stroke and Play For Today. With such surreal performances, his popularity couldn't remain restricted to the UK. He gave an outstanding performance in the famous TV series Mansions of America and became a television celebrity in the US. He even earned his first Golden Globe nomination for portrayal of Robert Gould Shaw II in Nancy Astor during this time. Soon after gaining soaring popularity in the US, he moved to California to film for one of the most notable works NBC's romantic and humorous detective series, Remington Steel. The show changed a lot for Pierce, both professionally and personally. While filming for an episode in Ireland, he met his father, Thomas Brosnan, for the first time after he had abandoned Pierce and his mum. Although Thomas regretted what he had done, Pierce couldn't accept him. But Remington Steele also brought happiness in Pierce's personal life. It was during this time that Pierce met his first wife, Cassandra Harris. He instantly fell in love with this Australian actress. He considered himself lucky to have spent 17 years with her. He said in an interview that, 
Love means that everything is right with the world. It means that you are content with your own heart and in the presence of the person that you love who fills your day and makes you stronger and wiser and gives you the confidence to go out into the world. After they started dating, they lived together in their Wimbledon home for a while. They got married in 1980 and had a son together, Sean. Pierce also adopted Christopher and Charlotte, Cassandra's children, from her previous marriage with Dermot Harris. In fact, Pierce had said that he owes his James Bond career to Cassandra. Cassandra was filming for a James Bond movie, For Your Eyes Only, and he was on the set to see her perform. That's where he met the producer Albert R. Brockley, and the rest is history. He was cast as the fifth James Bond after Roger Moore. However, it didn't turn out perfectly for him. Although he got the James Bond role, he lost Cassandra to ovarian cancer on the 28th of December, 1991. He was shattered by her death. It was very hard for him to move on from there, but he tried his best. Just a year before embarking upon his life-changing journey as James Bond, Pierce met American journalist Keely Shay Smith. After several years of dating, they got married in 2001 at Ballantubber Abbey, Ireland. They gave birth to two sons, Dylan and Paris. He loves her with all his heart and told People magazine that she is the only woman who could make James Bond go weak. He went on to saying that she also gave him courage at the lowest low of his life. She got him back on his feet. On their 25th anniversary, Pierce posted a loving picture of them on Instagram with a very sweet caption that melted the fans. Even though he portrayed a ladies' man in his Bond career, he is a one-woman man in his real life. Circling back to his James Bond career, initially he signed only a three-film contract for the Bond movies. When GoldenEye, his first Bond movie, released in 1995, it grossed US $350 million globally, second only to the 1979 movie Moonraker. The critics considered him as a massive improvement over all his predecessors. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times stated that Pierce's Bond was more sensitive, vulnerable, and psychologically fuller than the ones before him. Fans loved him for his natural charm and flair for wit. People magazine featured him on the magazine cover as the sexiest man alive in 2001. The Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, appointed him as an honorary officer of the Order of the British Empire in July 2003. He featured on the 15th spot of the Irish Times list of the finest Irish cinema performers in 2020. After his first Bond movie's massive success, Pierce started Irish Dreamtime, his own production company. The first movie of the production house was The Nephew, released in 1998, followed by several others. With a stellar performance, his contract was extended to a fourth movie. He appeared as Bond in Tomorrow Never Dies, 1997, The World Is Not Enough, 1999, and Die Another Day, 2002. However, the critics didn't consider Die Another Day up to the mark. It got mixed reviews from the fans too. Even Pierce himself was not happy about it. He was approaching 50 years of age and didn't suit that character much. Therefore, in February 2005, he announced through his website that he was done with the role. Post this announcement, Daniel Craig was given the role in October 2005. However, there were rumours in the industry that Pierce was fired from the role because his cost didn't fit the production budget. While working in the James Bond films, he also featured in James Bond video games such as Nightfire and Everything or Nothing. But Pierce never kept his craft limited to James Bond. He appeared in several other films such as The Tailor of Panama, 2001, Laws of Attraction, 2004, After the Sunset, 2004, and The Matador, 2005, amongst others. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times called Pierce's performance in Matador as his career best. Since the end of his James Bond career, he has never looked back. He will appear in the upcoming film, The King's Daughter, as King Louis XIV. With a career spanning over 25 years, Pierce is one of the richest celebrities in Hollywood. His total net worth is somewhere around $200 million. He and his wife Keeley live in their Malibu mansion worth $100 million. The house sits on a 1.18 acre land with five bedrooms and a guest house. 
It has a patio dining space with beautiful ocean views. There are glass enclosed seating areas, a saltwater pool and a fire pit. The property is lined with tall palm trees and is connected to the beach. Along with this beautiful mansion, Pierce also owns properties in Hawaii, Dublin and County Meath. The James Bond actor has an equally impressive car collection as his property portfolio. He owns a Ford F-150, Range Rover Vogue HSE, Aston Martin V12 Vanquish, BMW 750i, BMW H7 Hydrogen and a BMW i8T. His most expensive is the BMW i8, worth $136,000. However, the Austin Martin is priceless as it was custom designed for him. Pierce lives his life in style, but he is very sensitive about social causes and the environment. He supported Greenpeace's campaign for a nuclear test ban treaty to prevent environmental damage. Pierce has been the UNICEF Island Ambassador since 2001. He worked with fellow Irish actor Liam Neeson for the launch of Unite for Children's Unite Against AIDS campaign. He even donated $100,000 to fund the replacement of a playground in Hawaii. He often sells his paintings to raise money for charity organisations. Losing both Cassandra and Charlotte to ovarian cancer, he has been a cancer awareness champion and spokesman for Lee National Denim Day. Pierce Brosnan is the true embodiment of compassion. Did you like the sensitive side of this fierce 007 agent? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.